Hi all, my name is uh, Jake Vanderplas. Thanks for tuning in. I'm a, an astronomer turned data scientist here at University of Washington, the eScience Institute. And um, one of the things that I spend a lot of my time doing here is helping scientists be more effective researchers by taking advantage of the computational tools that are available. Um, and one of the questions that I get most often is how you take the, uh, the Jupyter Notebook and kind of the exploratory data analysis that you do in the Jupyter Notebook and move that into a more uh, classic reproducible software engineering workflow where you have Python packages and tools that other people can download and import and use. And I decided to put together a short series of videos kind of showing how I do this myself so that it can help other people see how to do that. So um, for, for doing this we need an example data set and what I'm going to use here is uh, something from here locally in Seattle, the Fremont Bridge Bike Counter. Now this is a, a, a bicycle counter that's on a bridge that's kind of between the um, downtown Seattle and the northern, downtown Seattle here in the northern suburbs and it gets a lot of bicycle traffic. And if you go to the Seattle website you can see that there's a there's a, a nice little visualization here, a nice little tableau worksheet. But let's say we want to do a more detailed analysis of this and we want to do it in the Jupyter Notebook. Um, for the first thing we need to do is download the data, and it has the data is available here on this data.seattle.gov website. Uh, rather than just clicking this link, I'm going to do um, a right click and um, copy the link address here, and just save it in the Jupyter notebook so that we're we're able to retrieve that data again. And once we have that data, we need, to, we need to somehow download it. There are a number of ways to do that, but if you're working in um, Python 3, you can use the URL lib.requests import URL retrieve. Um, did I do that right? No. URL lib.requests import URL retrieve. And then we can say URL retrieve uh, URL, and we'll save it as uh, fremont.csv. So let's... Let's do that, it sh and, and if this worked correctly, we should be able to do head fremont.csv. This is a Unix command in the notebook, and we see that we have the file right there. Okay, so we've downloaded the data in a way that we can reproduce without having to go to that website and click again. That's an important part of the reproducible workflow, getting the data here. If you're used to working in Python, you know that we can do import um, pandas as pd, and we can save the data as by doing read CSV on this, uh, this data file here. Let's take a look at the head of the data. So that's a way that we can get the data into a data frame where we can start manipulating it in Python. Uh, there are a couple of things we might want to do differently here. We want, might want to set the index column to date. So the, date, the data is indexed not by this row number, but by um, the date itself. And the other thing is these dates currently are just strings. Um, so we'd like pandas to parse the dates. Um, automatically and turn them into dates that we can manipulate and use. So this takes a, a little bit because it has to parse the strings. But um, once we have that data in place, the, the next thing we might want to do is visualize. And if you're used to doing um, visualization in the, in the Jupyter Notebook, um, you can do matplotlib inline. This is a command that tells the notebook to put any plots in the notebook itself rather than in separate windows. And we can do data.plot just to see what pandas uh, Pandas shows us here. So here's our, our plot of our data, and you can see that it's a little dense. These are hourly counts over the course of four years, so it's a little bit too many data points for our little plot. So to see it a little better, we can resample, uh, say, weekly, and take the sum. So we're going to get the total number of rides each week over the course of these, these years on the east and west sidewalk. And this gives us some insight into the data and we can see where we might be able to start exploring more here. We have about maybe 4,000 trips a week during the gloomy dark uh, winter months and maybe 13 or 14,000 trips a week during the warmer so summer months. Um, so I'm going to end this video here. From here, what we're going to do is take a, a look at a slightly more detailed analysis of this data. And then I'm going to go back and take a look at how we can take this very linear procedural workflow that we're doing right here and turn it into a set of Python tools that someone could use to then um, import and do this kind of analysis on this data or on similar data sets. So thanks for tuning in, and uh, hopefully you'll, uh, you'll continue with the next videos.